The rumours may have been a little bit off the mark with all the details, but as it turns out, they were true. Ghost of Tsushima will be getting a DLC where we will be going to Iki Island, but more importantly, they've announced a director's cut for the game that's going to be releasing on the PS5. And brilliantly enough, the PS5 version of the game will include PS5 specific enhancements, such as DualSense controller haptic feedback, and that's pretty cool, but for now let's backpedal a little bit. The PlayStation blog post states that the Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut will be releasing on the 20th of August, and will be coming to both PS4 and PS5. Apparently this edition of the game will come with every piece of additional content that's been released to date, and the Icky Island expansion. Apparently this will also be alongside a bunch of other features. The PS5 version will come with 4K resolution options, improved load times. The load times for this game were pretty bang on anyway, so I don't see how that can be improved, but... I'm open-minded. I mean, they can be improved, but they were fast anyway. That's my point. And frame rates targeting 60 frames per second, so I'd imagine that means it may not always reach that, but it will try to. And also, apparently due to the PS5's ability to render cinematics in real time, the game will now be able to offer lip sync for Japanese voiceovers. Of course, there'll be enhancements to 3D audio as well, and the game will take advantage of haptic feedback and adaptive triggers. Furthermore, you'll be able to transfer your current save from PS4 to PS5, and if you already own Ghost of Tsushima, you can upgrade to the Director's Cut on the PS4 for $20. Or you can upgrade from the base PS4 game to the Director's Cut on the PS5 for $30, and you can upgrade your PS4 Director's Cut to a PS5 Director's Cut for $10. This is all US dollars, I should probably clarify. And for those who don't own the game, the Director's Cut can be purchased on the PS5 at $70 and $60 on the PS4. So if you already own the game, you don't have to rebuy the entire game, but it's not a flat-out free upgrade like some games are giving because I guess it's giving more content, therefore it can ask for a little bit there and if you pre-order the director's cut you get access to the base ps4 version of the game and can then convert your progress on the 20th of august which is pretty neat if you're into pre-ordering regardless i see this extra cost being something of a controversial topic for people who bought ghost of tsushima when it came out but we'll talk about that at the end also apparently alongside the director's cut there will be some updates to all versions of ghost of tsushima including updates to the photo mode new accessibility options for controller remapping and the option to hide your quiver during gameplay. I suppose that's to resolve any clipping issues for the players who feel bothered the most by that, because when there's visible clipping on things that you can't change, it can, I suppose, get a little frustrating, especially to players with OCD, which I'd imagine is a lot of players. And not enough games do something to address that issue once it's presented, but it's nonetheless annoying, so props to Sucker Punch on that. But what is there to know about this Icky Island DLC, I suppose, is a big question. <laughs> Icky. Sorry. Well, historically, just after the Mongol invasion of Tsushima, the Mongols also invaded the Isle of Iki, and so logically if there was going to be a DLC anywhere, it was always going to be there. Anyway, the DLC is described as a whole new chapter in Jin's journey, in which Jin travels to the island to investigate rumours of a Mongol presence, but soon finds himself caught up in events with deeply personal stakes that will force him to relive some traumatic moments from his past. Apparently this will be a whole new story and new characters, though what that actually means, I suppose it could be anything from a side mission chain to a full-on story expansion set after the main game. But beyond that, apparently this new island will feature tons of new content including brand new environments to explore, new armour for Jin as well as his horse, new mini games, new techniques, new enemy types and much more. There are also apparently even new animals to pet, which Sony felt the need to share, which is great. But I feel like everyone mentions that you can pet animals in their games now and honestly... It's no longer quirky. <laughs> now the big question of course is, what is this new content? Is it well thought out content or is it going to be less well thought out, more filler content? Because Ghost of Tsushima did have its fair share of both. You do have to strike a balance with those because in the end of the day, filler content can only be taken so much before it just becomes boring. An example being all the shrines and the foxes and things. It was nice for the first five times, but after about 40 of them, yeah, it was fucking boring. So new types of content may spruce it up a bit, but it needs to be a bit more engaging than that. New techniques and new enemy archetypes will be interesting to explore, Ghost of Tsushima's combat is one of its best features, new armour is what it is, the nature of this DLC you'd expect that. One thing I suppose I'll have to wait to be sold on is, what story is there to be told with Jin that hasn't already been told? Where can you go with his character that you didn't in the main game? As much as I look forward to seeing the answer to that question, I also worry it may compromise the focus of the main narrative a little bit, but you never know.
all in all, it all sounds good, but will it be enough to convince players who've already spent a full AAA price on buying this game when it came out to spend another $20, $30 just to upgrade to the director's cut? I suppose one last interesting thing is this paragraph. Finally, for Ghost of Tsushima Legends fans, we'll also be releasing some new updates including an all new mode that we're excited to detail in the weeks to come. And all Legends updates will be available at no additional charge to owners of any version of Ghost of Tsushima on either platform. Obviously a game mode that people would love to see in the Ghost of Tsushima multiplayer modes would be PvP 1v1 duels. The fact that this game doesn't have those already is just a travesty, I'm gonna be honest. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was the mode that they're on about because it would just make sense. I don't know how it would necessarily be applied in the existing Legends mode or how much of a cluster fucky disaster it could be but it's what's needed. And so that's my simplistic speculation of the day. Now, like I said before, one of the big points that I think people are gonna talk about is the money aspect of this. Could this come off the back of an expectation for upgrades like the PS5 version of a game to be completely free? I suppose to an extent, but there is more being offered here. But how much more and is that worth the blanket $30 upgrade from the PS4 version to the PS5 Director's Cut Edition considering you already paid roughly $60 when the game came out. The price may have dropped in the time in between but the point stands. And then there's some of the different launch editions of the game, some of which had some of the content that's been shown on the Director's Cut. It's like seeing all the DLC on offer and the only way to actually acquire all of it is to just buy the season pass, but you may already have some of it. That's not what this is, but it might as well be. Yes, it sounds like there will be some cool improvements in there, especially for the PS5 edition, but is it worth the extra 30 US dollars? The trailer we got was pretty bare, I'll be honest. Didn't really sell me on the new content at least not for $30. And furthermore, yes, this is a PS5 upgrade with performance upgrades and all that stuff, but the performance is already there, as you can see on the PS5, it runs 60 FPS at a higher resolution, and so there's padding in here that makes it look like that $30 is going a lot further than it perhaps is, so it's really hard to gauge what's justifying that mandatory extra $30, as it's really the only option for a PS5 upgrade, and some players won't even be interested in the DLC stuff. Maybe they just want to play the game with all the PS5 bells and whistles. Is this extra price tag reasonable in itself? We don't know. We haven't seen any of the DLC content barring a trailer which really didn't show us very much. And I feel like not enough thought has gone into the fact that some players will not be interested in all of the extra bollocks because many won't. And even then there's the picking and choosing. There's not much leeway for that either. Yes, I'm interested in the Yiki DLC. However, I'm not interested in getting an extra technique point and charm of Hachiman's favor an armor set, or a digital mini art book, and frankly, I couldn't care less about the director's commentary either. For some, this is a bigger deal than others for a lot of just reasons. For me, it's not really, but I feel like it's a fair point to bring up just the same. I feel like at the very least, they should have made a next-gen update available for everybody who already owns Ghost of Tsushima, and then allow people two options, to pick and choose and purchase the DLC content they want, or to purchase a pass that allowed them to access the lot. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on that one, because I feel like it is taking the piss a little and there's definitely a conversation to be had there because I'm sure the extra content is worth some of that money but is it worth the full 30 US dollars as a non-negotiable upgrade fee? I want you guys to let me know down in the comments section of course. That brings us to the end of the video anyway so thank you all for watching I hope you enjoyed be sure to go ahead and leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff. That would be super fantastic. And with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point. But until next time, take care and goodbye.